A couple of weeks ago when I was out mulching, I got um, a hydraulic hose caught on something and uh, like a dummy, I managed to do that. So um, I'm gonna have to replace this whole cast block right here, which I was pleasantly surprised to find only cost um, 80 bucks. So of course I ordered two because if I did it once, the odds of me doing it twice are pretty good. So this way I'll have a spare. Um, anyway, the UPS man is supposed to be bringing me the block today, and uh, then the, the fitting that goes here, the 3 8 fitting, is going to be here probably on Saturday, Friday or Saturday. Um, so I'll be able to get all this put back together and use the skidster again. It's been a real hassle not having it. It's amazing how much I actually use it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, fittings out and get all the lines disconnected while I'm waiting on the part to get here. So um, I went and got my, my baby wrenches out so I can get this done. So I'm gonna start with my gloves because honestly I hate hydraulic fluid. <laughs> I love hydraulics, but uh, I hate the fluid because every time I smell it, it means an expensive and time consuming repair. Um, even if it's not expensive in money, it's gonna be expensive in time. So since they're metric, Gotta use the, uh, the adjustable wrenches. I guess I need to go ahead and order myself a, a set of giant metric wrenches, especially now with the Volvo excavator. It's probably all, all metric too. So. guys on the bottom are going to be kind of a pain. I'm going to have to take this off to get those off, which sort of sucks because it would have been a lot more convenient to um, have this mounted to be able to take it off, but that's not going to happen. This one holding on to the electrical connector is a 13. Probably use a socket wrench for this would be better, but then I'd have to go get another tool. I'm gonna put the little bolts back in here so I don't end up misplacing them. So UPS showed up and um, sure enough, I do need these two pieces, which I should have known I was going to. All right, 
No, it should just come off right here. I'm just gonna use the wrench. There we go. So there's um, a couple of little springs down in here that fell out. So you wanna make sure you don't lose those. So I got all that off. Um, what I need to do now is figure out how I'm gonna get these two off without it braced on anything. The best thing would be to put it in a vise, but uh, I don't have one here. I haven't moved it yet. So I'm gonna just try and um, brace this with one wrench against these, which I don't know if these are gonna need to come out or not because I don't have the new one yet. So we'll find out when it gets here. Um, I hope they don't, but we shall see. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of a challenge. I said it would be a lot better if I had a vice here, but I don't. What do I have? Okay, so uh, like I said, I don't have a vice, but what I did find was um, some bar clamps that I have moved. So I'm gonna try and use those. Right. We'll see how that works. Hopefully this doesn't just fly off of here. Perfect. All right. So it doesn't look like the springs are in the standard flow, just in the um, or in the high flow. They're just in the standard flow ports. So you just need to watch out for those on the uh, standard flow. I really need my hammer. So I got my little sledge. Should make it easier to get this started. on it get some extra torque there it is all right there we go that gets everything off now I just gotta wait so here's our new block not broken I'm still really surprised this was only $80 not complaining just really surprised I really thought it was gonna be more like 800 so this one has a little o-ring on it looks like they've all got little o-rings on them i should probably go ahead and replace these since i've got them off so i'm gonna go grab my little o-ring kit so i've got my little metric o-ring assortment i'm gonna go ahead and replace these o-rings since i've already got it apart they weren't leaking but it would suck to put it all back together and uh, have it start leaking now so i'm gonna match them up i'm not sure what size they are so i'll just go ahead and match it up and uh, this one's actually kind of loose on there. Let's see if this one, yeah, this one's kind of loose too. So actually, the O-rings don't look bad. This one's a little bit deformed. The other one looks pretty good, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace them both anyway. All right, so the earrings I have are a little bit fatter. I don't think it's gonna be a problem um, since it's gonna compress in here anyway. It'll probably help give it a little bit better seal. But before I put these on, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up with a little bit of carb cleaner just so it's all nice and clean. Get the dirt, get the dirt out of it. Get the dirt out of it that got on it when it fell on the ground. All nice and clean. Clean this one up too. We'll go ahead and 
tighten this one on before we put the other one on and have to get in the way. And now just this last little one. It's the high flow down at the bottom. Standard flow up top. I'm cleaning up these springs too because they got fell on the ground. So I want to make sure they're nice and clean. So these have got O-rings on them as well. So the seal is at the O-ring. It doesn't need to be should it need to be super duper tight. But I'm gonna get it as tight as I can here. Ring should do most of the work. It's been much easier to start this bottom screw first. I don't know why. This has so. When you mount this back on, that's probably going to be the way you want to start. I felt like it was trying to cross thread, so I wanted to go slow just to make sure before I started cranking it in all the way. Last thing I want to do is cross thread it. put these on next and then I'll put on the standard flow connections. So when these nuts tighten down, these compression fittings, it um, tightens up that little bushing in there as well. All I have to put on right now is uh, the standard flow connections. I'm still waiting for that, uh, that little 3 8 fitting. It should hopefully be here in a couple of days. So um, again, don't forget to put these little springs back in. Connecting back on. All right, I just need this part and we're good to go. So I got my, uh, the last little piece that I needed in. Um, this is the one that came out of it, and you can see it was missing the internals. It really just needed the spring and uh, this little part, but it was easier to get the whole thing. So this didn't come with an O-ring or anything, um, but looking in here, I don't think there's any way it's gonna seal without one. So I grabbed one of these out of my O-ring kit. Um, I tried the SAE and the metric, but the SAE is the one that fit the best. So this is an R12 is what uh, I thought ended up fitting the best. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here in the back 
first and then put this in and tighten it up against the o-ring so you just got to depress the spring a little bit first get it cat get it catch and then once you get it caught you can mostly turn it by hand until it gets to the end grab a wrench tighten it down the rest of the way That takes care of all of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this bad boy up. See if we've taken care of all the leaks. So it looks good so far. Um, the only thing I'm really gonna be able to tell is to start running it, hook up an implement or something, but it looks like we've got it taken care of so far. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and click that like button down there. Um, if, if you enjoy the content and would like to see more like it, click the little subscribe button. And as always, I welcome your comments or feedback. If there's something you'd like to see or a particular video was more interesting than another, please let me know. I do this so I can look back on my history, but hopefully I'm helping, helping others learn and uh, figure out how to do things better on their, their own as well. Thanks again.